The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents The Future is Yours, starring Rosemary DeCamp and Bobby Driscoll. Don McNeil is your host. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Here is your host, Don McNeil. Most stories have a romantic turn. You know, the boy meets the girl, they fall in love, they're married, and live happily ever after. But what really happened? Well, the boy met the girl all right, and she thought he was the most handsome, the most wonderful person in the world. And he thought that she was the most beautiful, the most exquisite girl in the world. So they were married, and they were happy, very happy. But one day he comes home from work, and she's in the kitchen crying over the burned potatoes and pudding, and she looks neither exquisite nor beautiful, and he feels tired and annoyed. One word follows another, and both are disillusioned and discouraged, because their expectations of one another are not being fulfilled. She is no longer exquisite, and he is no longer wonderful. Neither is what the other had imagined. Yes, homes can be and are unhappy because they're built on false hopes, and that's why every home needs the peace and understanding that comes with family prayer, the influence and guidance that comes with God's help in a family. That's why millions of families are making family prayer a daily practice. We'll hear from Don McNeil again following tonight's family theater play, The Future is Yours, starring Rosemary DeCamp and Bobby Driscoll. I suppose you'd call me an average American mother. I like to think of myself as up-to-date. I've kept in touch with some of the latest styles, when we could afford it, did a little reading once in a while, and thought that the easiest thing in the world was to bring up our children on the simple principle that right is right and wrong is wrong. I never dreamed that a day was to come when I'd be put to a severe test. It all began one afternoon when I was taking a little time to do some reading and heard the children coming in from school. Mother, I got it. Oh, I'm so happy. It's just what I've Slow hoped for. Slow down, Loretta, dear. What have you got now? The school play. I'm going to have a leading role. Well, congratulations, dear. Mother, didn't I tell you? Someday I'm going to be a great actress. Yes, you've told us that so often. I think you'll have us believing it soon. But, Mother, doesn't this prove everything? About what, dear? About my going to the Dramatic Academy in New York. Oh, now, Loretta, you know that's something different. It's something we can't afford, that's all. Gosh, why is it we can't have money like other people? Well, we have enough money to live on and be happy. Both your father and I thought that buying a house and making a home was the most important thing we could give you. Well, maybe someday we'll be out of debt. And until then, we'll have to just make the best of what we have. But, gosh, I thought this would prove everything. Oh, please, Loretta. Is that you, Ellen? Yes, Mom. But, Mother, isn't there some way What's we could just... What's the matter with you, sis? You're all grumpy looking. Oh, nothing you'd understand. Well, I like that. You're getting to be a big shot. Oh, please, darling, let's not start another quarrel. What have you got there, Ellen? Oh, just some drawings I did in school. Let's see. Oh, they're beautiful. I guess you're really going to be an architect. Someday, maybe, I hope. Mother, may I sit here beside you so we can talk things over? Gosh, sis, are you putting on the act? Oh, go away. I want to talk to Mother. <laughs> you better run out and play, Alan. I bet you Loretta's cooking up something. Can I get something to eat, Mom? Yes, but keep it in the kitchen. Okay. What book were you reading, Mother? It's a book on psychology. On what? On uh, how to improve your mind. Oh. Tells how a mother should deal with a difficult daughter. Me? <laughs> well, sometimes you are a little difficult, especially when you ask the impossible. Does it say in the book anything about if the daughter wants to become an actress? No, I was just reading here about parents. Oh. 
says um, parents must live up to the same standards and ideals they expect in their children. They must never break faith with... You know what we read in school today, Mother? Uh, with apologies for interruption, what? Mom, I'm going out to play. All right, Alan, but be careful. I'm sorry for interrupting when you were reading, Mother, but I was thinking how Miss Wilson read in English class about a poet and how he had the divine spark, and she said some painters and, and actors have it, too. Oh, that's very interesting. Do you think I have the divine spark, Mother? I'm sure I don't know. Oh, but I do have, Mother. And if only I could spend a few years at the Dramatic Academy in Darling, New York Darling, let's and... face facts. We just don't have the money. It'd only be $4,000 for the two it years might just and... as well be $4 million. Oh, but I'd make good, Mother. I'd be seen by producers in New York. I'd be discovered. And it wouldn't be long before I could pay everything back with interest. Come down to earth, Loretta. You know we've got the mortgage on this house to meet. You know we owe the doctor for the appendicitis operation your father had, and you know we're just snowed under with all kinds of bills. But I've got to have my chance, Mother. You don't know what it means to be born with an urge like I've got. It's just fiendish. If I can't have a stage career, I'll just shrivel up and die. Well, your father will shrivel up and die if dinner isn't ready when he gets home. Oh, what's the use? Nobody understands. Of course I understand, Loretta, but what can I do? Now, just be a brave girl and keep your dream and, well, something might turn up. You never can tell. Mrs. Ritter! Mrs. Ritter, hurry! Oh, hurry, good heavens, hurry. what's happened? Oh, Mrs. Duffy, what is it? Oh, Ellen's been hurt. We've got to get him to oh. the doctor. There's no time to lose. Hurry. Ellen, what happened? Well, I put him in my car. He's bleeding terribly. Oh. Come on. It was a cement mixer and he was... It's his eye. He's bleeding. See? Do something. Oh, now, now, calm <laughs> yourself, Mrs. Ritter. Bring him over here. All right. Let me see there. Yes, it's a bad laceration above the eye. Oh, thank God. I thought... Now, here, I'll wash it out first. This antiseptic is going to smart a little, Ellen, but I have to clean that wound and... Uh... Ouch! Ouch! Oh, that hurts! Is it very serious, Doctor? No, not too serious. Oh, thank heaven it wasn't his eye. May I just set up for minor surgery? Four not termalon. Surgery? Well, yes, it'll have to have a few stitches, Mrs. Ritter. Stitches? Gee! How did this happen? It was a cement mixer, Dr. Allen got in the cement mixer. You tell him, Mrs. Duffy. I saw the whole thing, Dr. Green. Allen and Tom Rossiter were playing by the cement mixer, and I was just passing by when I saw Allen get inside the mixer. Well, it must have been the crossbar that struck his head when the mixer began to turn. You mean the workman had left the cement mixer unlocked? Yes, wide open. Why, that's criminal negligence. Yes, and Mrs. Ritter ought to sue for plenty. I've heard of things like this happening before, and... Mrs. Ritter, why don't you tell your husband to call on Mr. Jackson? He's our lawyer, and he's an expert in handling accident cases. Alan, can you walk into the other room? We'll take care of this. It'll be all fixed up in a few minutes. I got here as quickly as I could, Mr. Ritter. Now, has the company adjuster been around to see you yet? Yes, he called earlier in the evening, but I took your advice, Mr. Jackson. Uh, did I... he try to urge you to come to terms? Well, he was willing to settle all claims for $1,000. 1000 <laughs> Listen, Mr. Ritter, as I explained on the phone, if you put this case in my hands, I can confidently guarantee a settlement of $10,000. What do you think of that? $10,000? Mm -hmm. And maybe more. And I base that figure on a score of similar cases I've handled. Uh, you see, I've made a specialty of damage suits. That street repair corporation has lots of money. They're commissioned to take over these jobs, and it's to their interest to settle these matters as quickly and as amicably as possible. Uh, I see. Uh... So you just leave it all in my hands. Uh, talk it over with your wife, and we'll get everything set up. Uh, you know, this is an open and shut case. There are certain technicalities. <laughs> Mr. Jackson said he'd handled hundreds of cases like this one. He knows every in and out. Well, Loretta, pour your father some more coffee. Go ahead, Robert. I'm listening. He's figuring on getting a settlement of not less than $10,000. 10000 Well, Loretta, you're spilling the coffee. I, I can't help it. Gee, I'm so excited. 10000 Do I get all that money? Well, not exactly, Alan. You're uh... a minor. A minor? What's that? It means... You're just a kid. Oh, don't worry, Alan. If we get the money, there are lots of things we'll do. Yeah, we'll get it all right. It's an open and shut case. Just think. Ten thousand dollars. Oh. That'll take care of a lot of things, won't it, Grace? The mortgage and those bills and... 
<laughs> I guess you could get that fur coat you've had your eye on. And well, I could go to New York and study at that academy, couldn't I, Mother? There'll be nothing to stop me now. Well, yes, I guess so, Loretta. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Mother, you said something might turn up, and it did. I'm going to have my big chance after all. Gee, you all act as though you're glad I got that crack on my head. Oh. Oh. No, Ellen, of course not, dear. It's just that, well, so long as it did happen, this will be a wonderful compensation. We can set aside some of the money for you so that when you grow up, if you want to study to be an architect, you can have all the training you need. Oh, but if only we were sure there wouldn't be any after effects. Dr. Green said there wasn't much chance of that. And nothing showed up in the x-ray. Uh, it's all right, but you never can tell. I remember... Oh, by the way, Grace, uh, Mr. Jackson said he'd like to talk with you and Alan before the hearing. Oh, well, all right, any time you arrange. Well, will tomorrow be all right? Yes, I guess so. Now, Alan... When you take the stand Wednesday, don't let the company lawyer get you rattled. Take your time and think carefully before you answer. And uh, keep your eye on me. Yes, Mr. Jackson. Now, he'll probably ask you a lot of questions. The position the cement mixer was in, why you got inside it, and uh, how you came to be struck by the crossbar. You have to have your answers ready. I'll go over all that with him, Mr. Jackson. Yeah. And, uh, and then, Alan... He'll ask you if you suffer any pain from the accident, uh, you know, there over the right eye. And, of course, you must tell him that you do suffer pain. But I don't, Mr. Jackson. Not anymore. Uh, oh, you don't? No, sir. Not for over a week now. No, Dr. Green said that nature had done a perfect job of healing. So far as he could judge, there was no danger of the pain ever coming back. <clears throat> but, uh, Mrs. Ritter, if Alan makes such an admission on the stand, can't you see what it will do to our case? Hmm? The vital factor in winning this settlement lies in the fact that Alan is still subject to pain in that frontal region. Oh, well, but I can't have Alan tell a deliberate falsehood. Well, I'd actually be teaching him to break faith with himself and with other people. Mrs. Ritter, perhaps the wound doesn't pain the boy today, but it may pain him tomorrow. It's all problematical. And, uh, well, after all, $10,000 is a lot of money. Yes, and heaven knows we could use it, but I... I think I'd better talk it over with my husband. Yes, uh, do that. And remember, the time is running short. The hearing comes up on Wednesday. Grace, you're making a mountain out of a mole. I'm not, Robert. And anyway, it's just a simple question of right and wrong. No matter how you look at it, if Alan testifies that he's suffering pain when he isn't, it's a lie. But circumstances alter cases. We can explain to Alan the fine distinction that entered into this situation. That he's justified in making an exception to the rule. No, that's just beating around the bush, Robert. But, Grace, there may be serious after effects. How do we know? No, Dr. Green said there was little danger of that. And the way I look at it is this. It's all a question of values, moral values. Yes. Now, look. When you weigh in all the good that can come out of this, Alan's future and... And my stage career. And the new grip on life it'll give us. Why, well, I'd say it was the better part of discretion to, to permit Alan to... Uh... To what? Tell a lie? Oh, there you go, Grace. I don't know where you get these old-fashioned notions. There's a big difference between a liar and, a, and, and an opportunist. It's not going to mark the boy. It's not going to make a confirmed liar out of him. Oh, how do we know what it will do to him? At his impressionable age, there's no telling... Grace, will you try to keep a sense of proportion? I see Dad's point very clearly. Besides, Mother, how do we know what hard times are ahead of us? Maybe we're due for another depression. Just think what it would mean to have that money back of us. Yes, Grace. And when Alan grows up and we can't give him a higher education, how do you think he's going to feel toward you when he knows that you let his big chance slip through your fingers? Oh, I see your points very clearly, and... but. Goodness knows I want to do the right thing by everybody, but it's all so confusing. You, you, you've got me awfully upset. And my head's just spinning around. But please, we'll, we'll, let's not talk about it anymore tonight. But we've got to come to a definite understanding about this. The whole case hangs on that one oh. point. And remember, there'll be no redress from that street repair company if we lose the case. We burned our bridges behind us and we turned down their offer. And there's only one more day before the hearing. I know, I know, but please, just uh, let me alone now, will you? I can't think anymore. <laughs> You ready yet, Alan? I just got to put my shirt on and... Hurry, we have to leave in ten minutes. Oh, dear, that hair. I don't know what always makes it stick up that way. 
Hand me the brush. Alan, what'd you do to your tie? Gee, I don't know, Mom. You got it all wrinkled. Now I have to take it downstairs and run the iron over it. Oh, uh, Alan, you remember everything I told you, won't you? When you get up on the stand in court today. Yes, Mom, I'll remember. Couldn't sleep all last night thinking about it. Had me so upset. But I know I'm right. Truth is truth, Alan. And there are no two ways about it. But gee, Mom, all that money. We'll lose it if I don't. Yes, Alan, we will. But if we can't come by it honestly, it isn't right for us to have it. There are some things in this world that are more important than money. And truth is one of them. I know, Mom. But gee, then we won't get anything. And Dad... He'll feel awful, awful bad. And Loretta, too. How do too? I look, Mother? I put on my best things in case they take our pictures for the paper. Our pictures? Oh, well, you'd be a beautiful picture if you take off some of that lipstick. Where's your father? In his room, getting ready. Here, you take this brush and try to plaster down Alan's hair. I want to press off his tie. Listen, Alan, you're not going to let me down today, are you? You know I've done a lot of good turns for you. And just think, if I get this chance, Alan, I, I might end up as a movie star someday. Wouldn't you be proud to have your sister a movie star? And I make oceans of money. And just think what I could do, do for you and mother and, and dad. Oh, Jesus, I know. You told me all that before. Besides, you don't have to worry, because you don't have to come right out and say it pains you. You can just sort of look as though it does. Drop your face and, and put your hand over the scar. Oh, Alan, please. It means everything to me. I'll die if I don't get this break. Well, Alan, your big moment is almost here. Uh... Where's your mother? Downstairs. Now, remember, Alan, it isn't that I want you to go contrary to your mother. She's right about wanting you to be a truthful boy, but in a case like this, it's different. There are times when we have to make compromises with the truth. You know, give a little, yield a point in order to gain our end. Like getting your college education and helping your family out. I know what you mean. And remember, Alan, I love you just as much as your mother does, and I wouldn't urge you to do anything I considered out and out wrong. I understand, Dad. But Mom's going to feel awful bad. Alan, you could tell her your head started to hurt soon as you got on the witness stand. She'd never know the difference. And maybe it will hurt when those lawyers start shooting questions at you. Well, I don't know. Loretta, come down and get Alan's tie. All right, Mother, I'm coming. And, uh, Alan, uh, what I just said is strictly man to man. Keep it under your hat. Yes, Dad. <laughs> Now, please, Mrs. Duffy, will you keep to the facts in the case? You actually saw that the cement mixer had been left unlocked? Oh, yes, with my own eyes. And I thought at the time, what wicked carelessness. You don't know whether or not the boys broke the lock? Mm, well, no, I just saw the mixer open. Thank you, Mrs. Duffy. Well, you're welcome. And if you ask me, the company ought to pay heavy damages. That's all, me. Mrs. Duffy. Thank you. Dr. Green, will you please take the stand? Dr. Green, in cross-examining, I have only two points. When did you last examine this child? About five days ago. Did the child at that time complain of any distress? No. From your diagnosis, would you say the condition is permanently healed? Well, yes, but these things are not always predictable. I have known cases where distress has returned, and often after a long lapse of time, in the form of headaches and dizziness and a tendency to nervous irritability, especially if the scar tissue touches on a nerve ending. And, Doctor, have you known this boy, Alan Ritter, over a long period of time? Yes, I brought him into the world. And his sister, Loretta, too. And I've taken care of all their childhood ailments. Would you describe Alan as a truthful child? Yes, I would. Thank you. That's all. And now, Alan Ritter, will you please come up here? Go ahead, dear, and remember, tell the truth. Remember what I told you, Alan. Uh, Your Honor, in a case of this kind, we can dispense with the usual preliminaries. Uh, you're going to tell the truth, son? Yes, sir. Well, Ellen, you had quite an experience, didn't you? Yes, sir. I'm sure it was taught you a lesson never to get inside a cement mixer again. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dr. Green has told us that so far as he can judge, the injury you suffered has been healed permanently. Now, the important point we wish to establish, Ellen, is this. Have you been suffering any pain from that wound since the doctor examined you last? Have you, Alan? What? I... 
Dr. Green has told us that you're a truthful boy, so I... I know I can count on you for a truthful answer. I... I... I don't remember. Oh. You don't remember? I... No, sir. I... I'm not sure. Well, did you feel any pain yesterday? You ought to remember that. How about last night? Well, maybe. I... I don't seem to remember. I... All right, I'll put it this way. Do you feel any pain there above your eye? Now, at this moment. I notice you put your hands up to your forehead. Does that mean it pains you? Well, I... I... Don't let me down, Alan. Don't let me down. In a case like this, it's different. Be smart, Alan. We must compromise. The truth, Alan. Remember, the truth. Mother's old-fashioned, Alan. I'll die if I don't get my chance. Why don't you answer me, Alan? I ask you a very simple question. Are you suffering any pain at all? Now, at this moment? I... I... Speak up, Alan. No, no, I'm not. I don't feel any pain at all. I feel fine. I'm all right, and that's the truth. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Green. I'll drop in to see Alan again tomorrow evening. Yes. Goodbye, Doctor. Sit down, Mother. You look exhausted. Yeah. I didn't sleep a wink last night. Did Dr. Green say Alan would get over it? Oh, it's only a second-degree fever brought on by all the emotional strain. Loretta, you don't know what you've done. You should have heard him in his delirium last night. And it was you, you and your father, that brought that on. Well, I hope you're proud of yourselves, both of you. What, well, what do you mean? You know what I mean. You tried to influence him behind my back. It all came out in the delirium, things that were torturing his mind. He kept saying, we must compromise, compromise. And don't let me down. I'll die if I don't get my chance. Over and over, he kept mumbling and mumbling. Oh, I'm ashamed of you, both of you. Uh, no use talking about it now. It's over. We've lost the money. And I'm glad, because if Alan had lied on that stand yesterday, he'd always have remembered how easy it is to twist the truth and how profitable. And we'd have violated every principle of right and wrong we've tried to teach him. Yes, I, I guess you're right. There you go, still compromising. You know I'm right. I'm sorry, Mother. I know I was wrong. But when I saw that chance, I... I was carried away. And... Loretta, if it's in you to be a great actress, you'll find a way somehow. Others have done it before you. And you'll be all the greater for the struggle. Grace, you... You know, I never thought my own son would have to teach me a lesson. And, well, all I can say is... You should be proud of him, Grace. Very proud of him. Proud of him? Yes, I am. You've no idea how proud... The Future is Yours starred Rosemary DeCamp and Bobby Driscoll. Now, here is your family theater host for tonight, Don McNeil. I've heard it said that a husband may support a family, but it's a wife who makes a home because it takes a mother's care, a woman's heart, to fashion a spirit of harmony and understanding within a home. Well, now, true as that is, isn't it equally true that a father's love and guidance can be the most important influence in a home? The happiest place of all is a home where father and mother work together in love and understanding. A home where there is mutual appreciation and encouragement. Yes, we all like to be appreciated. We all need encouragement at times. If our efforts are belittled, if our words are twisted and misunderstood, then our home is heading for unhappiness. Little misunderstandings pop up in every home. Maybe that's because we expect those whom we love to be perfect. Yeah, sometimes we do. And it takes patience and forgiveness to have a home radiate happiness 
We need God's help. We need family prayer as a daily practice in our homes because with God's help, we can be more patient and forgiving and understanding. That's why in happiness and love, a family that prays together stays together. This is Don McNeil saying good night and God bless you. Our thanks to Rosemary DeCamp and Bobby Driscoll for their performances this evening and to Walt Spence for writing tonight's play. Music was scored and conducted by Max Tear. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Willard Waterman, Pat Lowry, Ruth Parrott, Norman Field, Paul Conrad, and Bob Holton. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Pat O'Brien and Margaret O'Brien in Life's a Circus. Your host will be Fred Allen. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Portions of tonight's program were transcribed. Be with us next week at the regular broadcast time when our Family Theater stars will be Margaret O'Brien and Pat O'Brien with Fred Allen as host. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the mutual broadcasting system.